Viewers, welcome to Nursing Tutorials with Jamila. Today we are going to be looking at the pelvis. The pelvis is a basic like structure that is made up of three bones. Two nominate bones, one sacrum, and one coccyx. Each innominate bone is made up of three bones that are fused together. The ilium, the ischium, and the pubic bone. On its lateral aspect is a large cup shape at a tablum, which articulates with the head of the femur. Now, these three bones, the three innominate bones, all participate in forming the acetabulum. We have two of our five of the acetabulum consists of the ilium. Two of our five of the acetabulum is the ischium. And one of our five of the acetabulum is the pubic bone, is from the pubic bone. The ilium. The ilium is made up of two parts, the upper part and the lower part. The upper part is the flayed out portion of the ilium and it is known as the iliac crest. When the hand is placed on the hip, it rests on the iliac crest. Anteriorly to the uh, ilium, it's a bony prominence. That is the anterior superior iliac spine and below it is a similar projection known as the anterior inferior iliac spine. The ilium also consists of these similar pro, uh, projections at the posterior aspect, that is posterior superior iliac spine and posterior inferior iliac spine. At the interior aspect of the ilium is a concave depression known as the iliac fossa. In the outer aspect of the ilium is roughened for attachment of gluteal muscles. Now the ischium. The ischium is the inferior posterior part of the innominate bones and it consists of a body, the body and the ramus. The rami of the um, ischium participates in completing or forming the oval shape of the rectal foramen. It also has a large prominence known as the ischial tuberosity. Now, the ischial tuberosity is the strongest part because it bears the weight of the body in a sitting position. Okay? So it bears the weight of the body. Behind and a little above the tuberosity is an inward projection known as the ischial spine. Now the ischial spine is of utmost importance in obstetric because it allows the assessment of progress of level. So the futile health head can be estimated in relation to the ischial spine. All right, then the pubic bone. The pubic bone are two in number, each from innominate bone, and they are joined together by the symphysis pubis joint. Symphysis pubis joint. And it's also made up of ramos the superior ramus and the inferior ramus which joint okay with the ischium to form the obturator foramen the obturator foramen allow the passage of blood vessels and nerves to innervate the pelvic organs all right
the sacrum. The sacrum is a wedge shaped bone. It consists of five fused vertebrae. And it forms the posterior wall of the pelvic cavity. The, it is made up of two parts. The base, which is the superior aspect, and the apex, which is the lower aspect of the sacrum. The apex is one that articulates with the coccyx and the upper border of the first sacral vertebra articulate with the first lumbar, okay, the first lumbar vertebra. The anterior surface of the sacrum is a, is a concave portion known as the hollow of sacrum, all right, the hollow of the sacrum. Laterally, the sacrum extends into wings which are also known as ala, okay, or wings of the sacrum. There is presence of two, uh, four pairs of hollows or foramina on the um, sacrum, okay? One, two, three, four. And these foramina allow the passage of nerves from cauda equina to supply the pelvic organs. The posterior aspect is also roughened, okay? It allows for the passage of, uh, sorry, it allows for the attachment of muscles. The coccyx is a vestigial tail. It consists of four fused vertebrae forming a small triangular bone. You can see the shape, right? It's triangular in shape. This articulate with the sacral segment. It articulate with the sacrum superiorly. Now the two innominate bones, the sacrum and the coccyx, are joined by the pelvic joint. Okay, they are joined together. They articulate with each other by the pelvic joint. We have two sacroiliac joint one at the right and one at the left side then we have one sacrococcygeal joint and one symphysis fulvis joint the symphysis fulvis joint is the midline cartilaginous joint which unites the rami of the right and the left pubic bones then the sacroiliac joints are the strong joints. The sacroiliac joints are the strongest joints. They are the weight-bearing synovial joints with irregular elevations and the pressures that produce the interlocking of the bones. They join the sacrum to the ilium and as a result, they connect the spine to the pelvis. Okay, they connect the spine to the pelvis. The joints allow limited limited backward and forward movement of the tip and promontory of the sacrum so this movement is also known as nodding the sacrococcygeal joint is formed where the base of the coccyx articulate with the tip of the apex of the sacrum it permits the coccyx to be deflected backward during the process of delivery so that is during the delivery of the fetal head. Okay. In summary, today we have looked at the pelvis, the parts of the pelvis, that is the two innominate bone, the sacrum, and the coccyx. We have looked at the ilium, which is made up of the upper and the lower part. If you look at the um, ischium, that made up of, of the ischial tuberosity and it also participates in forming the obturator foramen. We have also looked at the joint that puts these uh, bones, the pelvic bones together in order to bear the weight of the spine. So this is just a summary of the pelvis. If you like this content, please don't forget to subscribe and also hit the like button.
Thank you.